What is going on guys? Welcome to the video. This is episode one of my marathon prep series, sub three hour marathon prep series. And today I'm in beautiful Northern California. And so I thought what better way to kick off the series than by giving you guys my tips and tricks on how to run your first ever marathon just based off of the tips and tricks I learned through my experience running my first one. Um, but we're gonna do it in Yosemite. In order to run a marathon in under three hours, you have to be able to run a mile in six minutes and 50 seconds, 26.2 times. And on October 8th in the Chicago Marathon, that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm definitely not fast enough right now. There's no way I could be dropping 650 paces for 26.2 miles. My last marathon was last summer, and it was my first marathon as well, and I ran it in three hours and about 20 minutes. So as you can tell, I have a lot of time to shave off of that. And so the way to get faster is to do speed workouts, and what better place to do speed workouts than here in Yosemite. Where to go, get a little fart lick workout in. Sounds like you're licking a fart. So the workout today is what's called a fartlek, which sounds just utterly foul if you ask me. But what it is is a workout that incorporates running at faster paces with running at slower paces. And the overarching goal is to get you to be able to run faster for longer. I started off this workout with an easy two mile warm up, just chilling, taking in the views, enjoying myself, it was awesome. Do not skip out on warming up, especially on speed session days, because just trying to go for it, like right off the bat, you're probably gonna tear your hammy off your leg. Immediately after the warm up, I'm going into 30 seconds at a hard, fast pace. Once the 30 seconds was up, I went directly into a minute and a half at an easy pace, and that was one set, and I repeated that eight times. Workout complete. That was a tough one. First speed session of marathon prep. But at least we had Half Dome over there, El Cap back there. The views are incredible. So, really good workout. About to get a two mile cool down in, and then we'll go from there. So, as we're cooling down, I want to talk a little bit about my marathon prep this year and kind of my plan. So this year, since I'm signed with VPN, I'm working with a coach for the first time. His name is Jeff Cunningham, same guy that coached Nick Bear to run his sub three hour marathon. The dude knows his stuff. And when going into this goal of running a sub three, I knew I needed someone who's way smarter than me, helping me formulate a plan of action to get this done. So what we're doing is about a five month build, which gives me a ton of time to build up my aerobic base, which if you don't know, for marathon prep, I would say the most important thing to focus on is just time on your feet and getting mileage in. But for me, as this is my second marathon, I'm gonna be focusing a little more on my speed. So the way to do that is incorporating one to two speed sessions a week. Right now we did our first one, um, and as the prep builds, we'll incorporate more, but right now, Kind of easing into it about 40 miles a week right now and then eventually we're going to progress 
and get to about 60 miles. So we're gonna hit the ground running, but right now we're easing it into it, having a good time. If you're not having a good time, you're doing it wrong. So we're gonna finish up this cool down and get on with the day, see what Yosemite has to offer. Seven miles done. That's a great way to start our day here in Yosemite. I gotta put you guys on the Hoka slides. These things are probably the greatest thing I ever purchased. I mean, just look at these things. I won't buy Hoka shoes, but I will buy Hoka slides for sure. These things are awesome. They're like walking on clouds. All right, so we just got done demolishing a large pepperoni pizza. So that was amazing. But now we're gonna go check out El Cap, Half Dome's right there. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm excited to see El Cap because ever since I watched Free Solo, it's got me hyped to come visit. So I might go Free Solo it myself if I'm feeling up for it. Um, I think Sophie might, might try. She's gonna do it with ropes. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I don't hit someone. Oh my. We're almost two for two. I'm wiping, wiping fools out of here. About to go with this waterfall thing. But these people are getting blasted up here, so I'm gonna use my phone. Ready for this? Yeah. Woo. Yeah. All right, I wanna see you go, I wanna see you go. Okay. Did it. Alright, we're almost to the summit of El Cap. I will be the second person in history to do this. This is crazy. And no training. No, I haven't even rock climbed in my life, so we're just gonna get to the top here. I'm gonna do a quick Snapchat. Uh, I'm just kidding. We're currently just sitting here watching like a group of people climbing El Cap. I'll try to zoom in and show you guys a little clip, but it is absolutely wild to watch. I used to think like running a marathon was like an insane thing, and it is, but people who can rock climb that, that's like a whole new level. It's wild. It's also crazy coming here and seeing this after, like, I, I'm not kidding, I watched Free Solo, like, five or six times. It's, like, was my favorite documentary. So it's kind of surreal being here and just looking at that rock face. It's incredible. This place did not disappoint. It's awesome. So relaxing, too. We're just, like, chilling by a big tree, watching these climbers. Enjoying the vibes. All right, we're currently deep in the forest of Yosemite. It's like it's like the dark forest of Lord of the Rings or something. Mine. Kind of just seeing how close we can get to El Cap. I have no idea, so we're just kind of trying. Sophie's having a great time. So fun. All right, that is gonna wrap up our time here at Yosemite. I got a little El Cap rock, so I'm gonna take that back with me, but that's it. It was an awesome trip, super good time. Got some good training in, some good sightseeing. Now it's time just to enjoy a little late night road trip back to Vacaville, California. All right, good morning everyone. My camera died last night, so didn't really get to film the drive back, but this morning we're back in Vacaville, and I'm about to fly the drone, get some cool shots of this place, so let's do it.
Oh, look at this. It's a fro. It's a literal fro. So guys, we're here getting my hair fixed. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. <laughs> look at that. There's so much. So this is Allie, and we're just trying to like figure out what to do here because I, I have such long hair, Very and I want to do something cool with it. I don't want to just chop it because it's like two weeks ago I came like dangerously close. Like I had a, a appointment booked to chop it, but then I felt Why bad and I, do I don't know. It was a, it was like one of those moments of like doubt. He has been very bad about his hair. So we're just gonna fix it up here. Some arm the foil. All right, guys, we're going pink today. Half pink and half purple. This is like the longest hair cutting process I've ever been a part of, and it's awesome. It's like a whole day. Like, it's like, oh, it's, it's I can see why people like center their days around this. I love it. It's like so subtle and nice. <laughs> this makes nice. your face look different, doesn't it? It really does. It this is the move. That's a cool looking you comb. A... Wait, do I? It's like a thicker comb. No, it's not yeah. that cool. Like wide tooth. Wide tooth? Look at but that. But nothing thing. like that. That okay. thing's you can, monstrous. You Where can, can I get You can that? have this. <laughs> Wait, uh, actually? This, yeah, of course. I have a billion uh, combs. You it's only gross. are going to brush your hair with this. This okay. is the only thing that'll like actually detangle your hair without making it frizzy. Whatever Ali says goes. Absolutely. He gets it. If I need to go bald, I go bald. <laughs> I would never do that to you. <laughs> this is so sick. Okay, and then this is the curl cream. I'ma keep winning, winning. I'ma keep winning, winning. Ooh. <laughs> Haircut no, done. Incredible. Confidence restored. <laughs> All right, I'm back in Arizona after a few days in California. I had a great time, as you saw, going to the beach, going to Yosemite, getting some good training in. But I'm back now, and I wanted to end the video by giving you guys my top tips and tricks for how to train for your first marathon. These are things that I wish I would have known before training for my first marathon, and just things that I've learned. So I'm gonna simplify everything for you in three tips. First tip when training for your first ever marathon with the goal of running 26.2 miles for the first time ever, is just worry about your weekly mileage. Don't overcomplicate it. I know when I first started my first marathon prep, I was really worried about like, what's the best training method? What's the best plan? Should I follow this plan or this plan? But all that really matters is just running the miles. For example, if you have 40 miles to get done in a week of marathon prep, it doesn't matter how you do those miles or where you do those miles. All that matters is that you do those miles. That's gonna ensure that you have the amount of volume you need to be able to build the stamina and build your endurance to be able to last 26 miles. Now, with that being said, you do need to incorporate one long run per week. Those long runs are gonna be the most important runs you do in a week because not only do they build your fitness, your endurance and stamina, but they also build your confidence and that's huge. When you go out for those 15, 16, 17, all the way up to 22 mile runs, those are the runs that are gonna build your confidence and you're gonna look back on when you're in the marathon. All right, tip number two has to do with nutrition and hydration. You are gonna be moving a lot during marathon prep, obviously. So you need to be eating a lot as well and you need to take it seriously because nutrition and hydration is literally the difference between having a good run and being able to run far and having a bad run, cramping up and feeling like death. So seriously, lock in your nutrition. Now I could sit here and give you all the best things to eat and all the things that work for me on my runs, but what works for me is not gonna work for you. We could literally eat and train the exact same way and we would both get completely different results. That's because nutrition is super individual to the person. So the way you figure this out is by just trial and error. Figure out what works for you on your runs, what makes you feel good, what makes you feel good after your runs. You have a lot of time during marathon prep to really lock in your nutrition and figure out what works for you on your runs. Same thing goes with hydration. You could literally have an awful run, have no energy, have nothing to give, and it's all because you didn't drink enough water or electrolytes in that day. So lock it in. You have to take the extra effort to really focus on these things because in the end, it is probably the most important thing alongside your training to having a successful marathon prep. All right, my third and final tip is just to enjoy the journey. It's the reason I named this whole series Journey to Sub 3. 
it can be really easy to hyper focus on the goal we're trying to accomplish and just the accomplishment of crossing the finish line and running 26.2 miles. And although that was an amazing feeling, one of the best feelings of my life was crossing that finish line. But what was even better than that was the three months of training, all the miles, all the sweat, all the days, all the weeks, all the preparation that came together to even allow you to be able to accomplish that goal in the first place. During your first marathon, you will have this moment of realization where you start flipping through all the memories you have of the months leading up to that moment. And it's gonna be the thing that pushes you across the finish line. I promise you it will happen. So just take an extra moment every time you're running to just enjoy it and realize that you have the ability to run. A lot of people don't have that ability and you do. And so never lose sight of it, be in the moment, enjoy it, have fun with it. Because ultimately, if you're not enjoying yourself, if you're not having fun, then that end goal is a little less exciting and a little less awesome. All right, so those are my tips for training for your first marathon. I hope they help you out on your marathon training. I'm gonna wrap up the video here. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm gonna be posting a video every week. So you're gonna wanna be subscribed, turn on your post notifications, make sure all that's covered. Drop it in the comments, any questions you want answered about marathon prep and I will respond to you. So just flood the comment section if you have any questions. I'm gonna sign off for now, but I will see you all next week.